It's a really exciting and a really challenging time to be an embryonic stem cell researcher. Particularly since the isolation of human embryonic stem cells, people are thinking, us included, very concretely about how to use these cells for therapies. For example, to treat neurodegenerative diseases. Right now at Wesleyan, in a collaboration with Jan Nagley's group and Gloucester Aaron's group, we're focused on understanding how to use stem cells to treat mouse models of epilepsy. Certain kinds of inhibitory cells appear to die. And our goal, long range goal, is to try and replenish those cells, starting out with cells derived from embryonic stem cells. So we're trying to fix first mice in terms of their seizure activity to suppress the seizures by giving them these cells. Those cells are essentially an unwritten script. They are blank. They don't know what they are going to become when they grow up. And what we're really interested in understanding is what kinds of signals and interactions allow them to become different types of cells. Connecticut is one of the few states in the country that's made a commitment specifically to embryonic stem cell research with a Connecticut stem cell initiative. And our group here at Wesleyan has been forced enough to be funded by that initiative. Most recently, my work has focused on understanding how to go from one of these unspecified embryonic stem cells to a neuron. What are, what are the signals, what are the conversation cells have with each other that allow that particular lineage of differentiation to unfold over time? And we can do that in a culture dish in a very controlled way, and it's a fascinating process to watch. As a scientist who wants to understand the arguments that are being made, I want to be able to be an articulate advocate for my work. That means I have to understand the arguments that are being made and the ethics. And being able to bring those two things together, I think, has deepened my understanding of where the work sits in a political and ethical framework. And I couldn't have done that at other institutions where that kind of interdisciplinary work is not particularly encouraged. For a scientist, Wesleyan is a, is a wonderful environment because it allows you to stretch outside of your own area of comfort and expertise. To be a true citizen of the 21st century, you have to understand what's happening in the world, and that means you have to understand science. I became really interested in teaching non-majors. They have an openness and a willingness to kind of um, see a diversity of points of view that sometimes our majors don't. From the perspective of what these students want to learn about, grab them with a subject that you know interests them, and then they'll be surprised to find out that it's really fun to learn the biological details because the beauty is in the details. It's a lot of fun to watch them kind of sometimes be surprised by how much they're enjoying learning the biology of the subject.